Hey everyone and welcome to another video! Yay! I saw that YouTube's favorite physics memer, Dotson, did a video ranking physicists, so I thought that I'd do the same. <laughs> Dotson did a YouTube video ranking famous uh, dead physicists, and I thought I'd respond to him because I didn't agree with everything. But I think that's one of the nice things to it, the uh, sign. The history of science and I really enjoy doing a little scientific history so let's jump into it okay the first thing with with this little setup is that uh, Americans or should I rather say USAans because I don't want to uh, make fun of uh, the very intelligent people in Colombia and Canada uh, is that they they obviously do not know the correct sorting of the alphabet S goes all the way down here, obviously. As a physicist, the first thing that you do when you rank someone is that you go straight to Feynman and put him on the top, which is a very common thing to do and say. I, everyone likes Feynman, he's a very likable person, You're very charismatic, definitely, and you usually you hear a lot about him, so I do agree that he is a great phys physicist, but there are better ones. For instance, Einstein, which is a definite top-tier physicist because, well, he, in my opinion, deserved at least three Nobel Prizes doing a lot of contributions. Well, essentially, laid down the groundwork for quantum mechanics with his, um, his work in uh, the photoelectric effect initially, but also had a lot of articles after that as well, and also for special and general relativity. So we should have really, you know, gotten three Nobel Prizes or something like that. Um, yeah, who else? I'll, I'll do the easy ones first. Maxwell, definitely top tier. Combining electricity and magnetism and explaining all of electromagnetism as well as light being a part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, top notch. A lot of the really old famous people, the reason that you know them is that they have re made a a great contribution. Consider musicians. You could probably, if you'd sat down, list 50 musicians, but from the 1700s, then you probably know three. If your name sticks around throughout history, then you probably did something great. So another physicist that I consider absolutely top tier is Dirac. Dirac famously combined special relativity and quantum mechanics in the Dirac equation. Very nice. It was a very difficult task to do, and this equation even predicted the existence of antimatter. Of course, Dirac didn't really understand what that predict prediction meant, having, having particles with the same mass but different charge and so on. He thought of it more like holes in the Fermi Sea, as in when, when you use the particle hole formalism from solid state matter. So he didn't really understand the prediction, but the Dirac equation really predicts the existence of antiprotons, which is amazing. So who else? Stephen Hawking. Everybody knows Stephen Hawking. I've read a couple of his books. Well, I've read one of his books, Brief History of Time. It was a great book and it really got me hooked on, on physics, but his scientific research I don't know that much about. I've heard of Hawking radiation, and the Hawking radiation is that black holes actually glow because in the vacuum of space sometimes a particle and an antiparticle may appear suddenly out of nowhere. And if this happens on the event horizon of a black hole, one of the particles may enter the black hole while the other shoots off into space. And in this way, uh, black holes radiate and actually lose mass. But apart from that, I don't know about that much about it. So I'm going to be a bit controversial here and put him C tier. He is famous, but I don't think he deserves that much. Okay, and now the famous quantum physicist Schrodinger. A little uh, tri trivia tangent here. So look at this amazing picture. This is when, from when Dirac, Heisenberg and Schrodinger arrived in Stockholm. So to the left on the picture, I won't re reveal all the entire picture until later. To the left we have three women. One of these is Dirac's mother. He wasn't married at the time. And the other two are, uh, I don't know which is which or who's whom. 
are uh, the wives of Dirac and no sorry of Heisenberg and Schrödinger so they are all, are all dressed in these nice fur coats and look pretty all right according to the fashion of the times I assume and if we look at here is uh, Dirac and Heisenberg these all three um, uh, physicists they won the Nobel Prize at the same time which is uh, why they are photographed in Stockholm here at the same time uh, and they also yeah, look pretty similar and kind of understood how to dress. And the reason I'm talking about their dress is because if you look at Schrödinger here, you see something quite different. <laughs> and I really love this picture. It's uh, with this, this this huge fur collar and the bow tie and he's wearing knickerbockers and these really round glasses. And he has a bit of a crazy hair going, going on as well. Uh, so, and then you have all the the other people in the in the picture there, kind of just ignoring him. And then, oh, why did we have to bring this this, this lunatic? <laughs> so I really love him. He must have been he must have been, been someone quite a character. And uh, his the Schrödinger equation is very famous. I've spent three years of my life solving it in different man uh, matters. I think Dirac is, and Maxwell and Einstein is the tier above, so I'm putting Schrödinger in the B tier. Top, top notch uh, physicists. All of the physicists are, are top notch. And then these, we have some mathematicians, or primarily mathematicians. We have Hamilton and we have Lagrange. And uh, I see that they, they did make a contribution in how one would formulate a system classically and then they use that formulation onwards in in, uh, in quantum mechanics because you're not very sure of uh, the positions and everything but as physicists i don't think they really spurred the progression in physics that much so i'm going to put them here together they're still great by all means but as far as physics goes i'm i don't i don't really know much of their contributions uh i think they probably did a lot of it in optics as well. Uh, okay, let's do a woman, Emmy Noether, uh, mathemati mathematician primarily. Uh, Noether's uh, theorem states that for every symmetry in a physical system, there is a conservation law, if I remember correctly. And what this really says that is that in a closed system or in the universe as a whole, energy is con conserved. And this is something that I think people had a pretty good idea about that it was true uh, before she proved it. But uh, it was a really deep thing and when I did quantum field theory we, we did this very laborious exercise of uh, actually showing that okay if you just assume these very small pieces of how the universe sticks together you see that here's the symmetry so then we must have a conservation law and we used essentially very basic principles and Noether's theorem to derive all of physics or at least up to the standard model Lagrangian so definitely high up but still a very specific thing that people are pretty sure about already so not the top and then we have Vera Rubin well she studied galaxies and their rotation and noticed something strange that if you add up all the matter the the galaxy should rotate at some predicted speed but they actually rotate a lot faster yeah that makes sense so there much must be something else there and this is what was later called dark matter and uh, the problem to figure out what dar dark matter is and how to detect it is uh, certainly generated a lot of work for theoretical physicists many people say that she didn't win a Nobel Prize is really an overlooked thing but still again this is a physicist I don't know too much about, but saying that there must be something is there is not the same thing as making a very huge prediction. So yeah, I'm going to put it together with... Uh, I apparently don't like uh, astronomers or cosmologists for some reason. Oh, well, let's do Fermi, Enrico Fermi. Great physicist, many things is named after him. Fermi statistics, there are other things, fermions. <laughs> I'm going to put him in, in B tier. And then the other woman we have here, Maria Sklodowska, or Marie Curie, as she is known now, after she was married to Pierre Curie, discovered radium, 
did a bunch of discoveries about radioactivity, different decays and stuff like, stuff like that. And she did win the Nobel Prize in both chemistry and physics, which nobody else has done. So, but still, these three lads at the top, I think, are better physicists. So, B. And let's that just get this over it and send uh, Tesla to the ranch. If uh, all these guys were hanging out at the club, Tesla will be the strange child that built these li these gadgets. Oh, what have you built now, Tesla? Another sparkly sparkly. Oh, that's very good. And let's face it, just put Feynman at the top. I like him as well. And then we have Lorentz. What's his first name? Was it Hen Henry? No, I'm not sure. Very important, both in quantum mechanics and special relativity. I don't know too much about him, but I know that he was, well, the group of physicists in Europe during the this time that he lived, early 1900s. There weren't that many people around, so everybody probably knew each other, but um, yeah, at least I've seen him in pictures together with Ash and everything, but yeah, I'm just putting a seat there, but I, yeah, just because I don't know him that well. Max Planck, he somewhat, he did, I don't think he believed his theory entirely himself, uh, which was that of quantized energy modes because he was trying to fix this whole black body uh, radiation problem and what is called the, the ultraviolet catastrophe. And it did, but he had to assume that energy came in, in quanta. And it, it turns out that that's true. But um, and it, it is a very creative contribution. Uh, and it, it's great. And he's also the leader for what is today known as Max Planck Society, which I think was Kaiser Wilhelm's University in, in, in Prussia. Yeah, I'm going to put in up. Up. And then we have, lastly, John Wheeler, and the reason I saved him for last is that I don't know too much about him, except that he was the doctoral advisor of Richard Feynman. So, just to put him somewhere, I'll put him in D. There are some people that I think are missing from this tier list. I would have added them if I was allowed to, but I, I just uh, went with Dotson's uh, uh, tier template uh, here and couldn't add any more. Isaac Newton. A tier. He made calculus as quick, quicker than we learn it in the university. And that was an amazing contribution. And just realizing that the same force that keeps the moon in the sky makes things fall to the ground. So Isaac Newton, tier A. I would also add, I think, Ernest Rutherford. Ernest Rutherford led the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge. And he discovered what most of what makes up an atom I also theorized that there must be some uh, matter that was chargeless that it was not able to detect yet, I think, and that was the neutron, of course, and it discovered most of the what was then thought of the, as the fundamental articles, particles. At least I think so. So he should, he would be B in my, my world, I think. And there's also Niels Bohr, the Danish uh, physicist. Not a perfect model, but he did... Um, come up with the whole idea of energy transition levels and everything and I would put him in B as well. That's it for me. I'd like to hear your, your response so please uh, submit your own uh, ranking. I'll link down below. I'm in the process now of finishing up my master thesis at the University of Oslo. I do have a lot to do but I am planning to put off a bunch of computational physics examples and tutorials in the future so Please subscribe if you think you will find out those interesting. Bye for now.